Hello, my good friends. My name's Judy Covington, and I want to encourage you today with the word about God supplying our needs. If we, um, at the church I attend, we sing all those old scripture songs from the, the 1970s. And when we sing is Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. So I was thinking about that, and I went to Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, which is where that passage of Scripture is. And I'm reading here, and it's Paul is telling us, he's writing a thank you note to one of his supporting churches. And what he says is, as he writes this, he says, it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. And he goes on thanking them. And the, word, the words that he's using here when he talks about giving and receiving, it's, a, it's an equal sort of thing that you, you give and I give and you receive and I receive. So it's not one-sided, but he's talking to people who have supported him. And his, his, this passage ends with him saying, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And that is what we call Jehovah Jireh. Well, in the Bible, there is a law of bi biblical interpretation that says that the first time a particular thing is mentioned in the Bible, you need to take note because it's important. So the first time those words, Jehovah Jireh, or the God, God will supply, or God will see to it is another way to um, translate that. God will see to it that your needs are met. The first time that appears in the Bible is in Genesis 22, when God has asked Abram to take his son, Abraham to take his son Isaac, up on the mountain and, and sac offer him as a sacrifice to God. And we read about that in Genesis 22. And I'm going to read a little bit here from the message translation. Uh, God is uh, ask Abraham to go up on the mountain and offer his son. So they go up on the mountain and, and Abraham is uh of course, doesn't want to do this, but he is, he knows that he's heard from God, and so he's going to be obedient to God. So as he's going up the mountain, his son asks him, we have flint and wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Abraham says, son, God will see to it that there is a sheep for the burnt offering. And they kept on walking up the mountain. And so when they get to the top and uh, they arrived at the place to which God had directed him, Abraham built an altar. This is not the first altar that Abraham has ever built. He was an altar builder, which meant that he was on good relations with God. He laid out the wood. Then he tied up Isaac and laid him on the wood. Abraham reached out and took the knife to kill his son. Just then an angel of God called to him out of heaven. Abraham, Abraham. Oh, yes, I'm listening. Don't lay a hand on the boy. Don't touch him. Now I know how fearlessly you fear God. You didn't hesitate to place your son, your dear son, on the altar for me. Abraham looked up. He saw a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. Abraham took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham named that place, and this is the first time in the scripture that this particular name for God is used. Abraham named that name God Yahweh, or Jehovah Jireh. God sees to it. That's where we get the saying, on the mountain of God, he sees to it. On the mountain of God, God provides what is needed. Now, many centuries later, another beloved son walked up that same mountain. And that was Jesus carrying his cross. 
And he became for us a sacrifice. With his blood, he bought us. So when we think about this, Jehovah Jireh, first, first mention here in, in uh, Genesis 22, verse 14, that place is called, Abraham called that place God Yahweh, or God sees to it, Jehovah Jireh. God sees to it. And that's where we get that saying. And Paul, all those years later, writing to the Philippians, uses that same word where he says, the same God that provided that sacrifice for Abraham, the same God who provided that sacrifice on Mount Calvary, is the same God that's going to see to it. He's going to provide for you. And he wrote that to a church, which was a missions sending church, a church that gave to missions, a church that gave to Paul's mission. And so I think as we look at this, we will know that not only does God provide for us in ways that we can see materially, you know, uh, uh, David says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or, or the seed of the righteous begging bread. God provides for us materially, but he also provides for us what we need spiritually. He provided Jesus and he provides for us every minute of the day. So the next time there's a missions offering, think about giving a little bit more. God will provide what is needed. I hope to see you again soon. I would like to tell you some stories from my long ministry, my long uh, connection with the Missionary Church International, and to tell you the way that God provided so many times from totally unexpected sources. Uh, God is truly amazing and truly awesome. We use those words somewhat carelessly sometimes, but he truly is an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Goodbye. See you later. Thanks so much for watching TMCI TV. If you found any benefit in this episode, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date with our future videos. If you are interested in planning a church, starting a ministry, or looking for 501c3 tax exemption status for your existing church or ministry, TMCI can help. Click the link in the description below for more information. We look forward to hearing from you soon. God bless.